So this is pre-algebra, lesson 7-8. Understand the y-intercept of a line. We, in this lesson, we'll be able to find the y-intercept of a graph and explain what it means. Let's start with solving this gusset. Eight-year-old Alex is learning to ride a horse. The trainer says that a horse ages five years for every two human years. The horse is now 50 years old in human years. How can you determine the age of the horse in human years when Alex was born? Mm. Do you see any patterns here? Any relationship? So what are some important information? You know that Alex is eight years old and then he's learning to ride a horse. The trainer says horse ages five years for every two human years. Okay, so make a table. Alex is eight, okay? And the horse ages five years for every two human, human years. years. Um, the horse is now 50 years old in human years. So that means how can we determine the age in the horse in human years when Alex was born? So if Alex gets older, of course, horse is gonna get older by um, by five years every two years. Uh, so if Alex Alex gets old two years more, then horse will earn five more years in human age. Okay, so fifty five. And so going down from eight, if you subtract two. So if you add two, you add five. If you subtract two, you also subtract five because you're going backwards, right? So if Alex is, is six, horse should be 50 minus five, which is 45, yeah? And so on. So four, if Alex is four years old, horse should be 40 years old. Alex, if Alex is two years old, horse, should be 35 years old. And if Alex is zero years old when he's born, how many years have the horse lived in human years? 30 years. So he, uh, the horse is 30 human years old. Okay. So, you can also make a table like this, but you can also graph your points using your linear relationship, okay? Um, if you say X is your age for Alex, Y is age for horse, and they're both in human years, right? And the grid lines are the same. So that, that's one, two, three, and so on. Um, you know, wait, let's add by two because we're running out of space. So that could be two, four, six, eight. And the horse is going to be 10, uh, 20, 30, uh, 40, and 50. So we're starting from eight comma 50, okay? If Alex is 10 years old, horse is 55 years old. And then if Alex is 12 years old, then it's 60 years old, okay? So it's, it's, the slope is not too steep. So every two years, it goes down five and then five, so that's 40, and that's 35, and this is 30. So the line should be a straight line, and it starts from 30, okay? Um, so you can either draw a table or draw a graph, 
or write a linear equation like we've, we've learned how to write um, in the last lesson. So in this case, your slope would be y change in y over change in x, rise over run. So your slope is how, how much do you get old for the horse? Five years per every two years for Alex, right? So then that, that means your slope is five over two. So y is equal to five over two x would be your equation. So there are multiple ways to represent this situation. So last time we focused on the slope. In this lesson, we will focus on the wider set, so where it starts. So last lesson, all the lines started from zero comma zero, but not all lines start from zero comma zero. When X is zero, you might have a different starting point like this, okay? Alex and horse cannot always be born together, right? You know, age, age is different for all animals and people, so it makes sense. We have a different starting point, okay? So we're gonna look into those examples. Um, look at focus on math practices in the bottom. A vet says that a cat ages eight years for every two human years. Ooh, I have a cat. If a cat is now 64 years old in cat years, how old is a cat in human years? Huh, okay. Cat ages eight years for every two human years. So if X is human, and y is cat years, what would be your slope? Y, change in y over x. So how much change do we have for y, for the cat? Eight years for every, how, how many changes for human? Two, okay, that's your slope. So your equation is y equals eight over two or four x. So y equals four x is your equation, okay? So if a cat is now 64 years old, what's your uh, what's the cat's age represented by x or y? Y. So if you your point has 64, what is your corresponding x? Is the problem? Okay. You can use the equation. If y is 64, what is 4? Solve for x. 64 divided by 4 is 16. So it's 16 years because the equation uh, represented by this situation is y equals 4x. So substitute um, y to 64 and solve for x, which is 16. Okay, good. All right, let's look at the next page. So think about our essential question. What is the y-intercept? And what does it indicate? What is the y-intercept? Hmm. Look at example one. Determine the y-intercept of a relationship. Mathilda and her friend are going bowling. She can rent shoes at the bowling alley or use her mother's old bowling shoes. How can she determine how much money she'll save if she brings her mother's old bowling shoes? So bowling passes are shown. It includes shoe rental, and it doesn't include how much the shoe rental is act it actually costs, right? But all the games should equal to the same amount of money. So you can figure out what the shoe, how much uh, the shoe rental is, really, by looking at the patterns. So one game is $4, and three games is $8. And five games is $12, 10 games would be $22. Do you, do you see some pattern, okay? One game. So X 
is one, right? If X represents gain and Y represents cost, then Y is four. But your equation should have a slope and then an X, and then we'll have one more thing added, which is your starting number. Okay, whatever you started with, you have that number, and then you add how much number it's repeated, how much X, how much, how many games you've uh, played, right? So you know, um, one game is four, three game is eight. So uh, one times some something, one times the cost per game plus your rental shoe cost would be four. Now one and, and three times your slope, your um, cost per game plus another shoe rental is eight. Okay, and then wait. Um, M times one plus shoe rental is four. So using these equations, you can figure it out. But let's look at the pattern um, one by one in the graph, okay? So you can plot these points on the graph. One comma four, three comma eight, five comma 12, and eight, 10 comma 22. And see you have a linear uh, relationship yeah, you can figure out the slope by counting your units on the graph. So you see rise over run is eight, uh, no, four over two, four, of, four over two, four, four over two, four over two, and then that's really two over one. Okay, two over one, two over one. Two over one, two over one. Okay, so your slope is two. And then you can extend the line to show where it starts from. So extend the line to the left and see, go down one and go left one. And then you'll see that's gonna be your starting point. Your shoe rental is how much? Two, even if you don't play the game, um, if you don't play the game, obviously you're not going to pay anything, but it shows you how much the shoe really cost without considering all the games you played, right? Yeah, so your shoe rental is $2, and she'll know that she, if she brings her mother's old bowling shoes, she'll save $2. All right, let's look at try it. Prices for a different bowling alley are shown in the graph. How much does this bowling alley charge for shoe rental? Okay, look at the graph and see if you can interpret and use this graph. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, prices for a different bowling alley are shown um, in the graph. How much does this bowling alley change for the shoe rental? The line crosses the y-axis at where? Look at your grid line. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And that looks like it's between two and four. So that must be three. So what is your point here called? You have zero comma three. So zero comma three. Remember your X comes first. And so the y-intercept is, where does it start from? Three, that's, that's your y-intercept, okay? That's called the y-intercept when you start at x equals zero. All right, so in these examples, why does the y-intercept represent the cost to rent bowling shoes? Why? Why does the y-intercept represent the cost to rent bowling shoes? Why is it not the cost for a game? How do we know? The graph, well, we know that the graph show there is still a charge even when no games are played, right? Which means uh, since the bowlers must be paying for something, the wire represents 
cost to rent bowling shoes. Okay. So it doesn't make sense. They're paying for something um, even when they didn't play any games, right? So that must be a rent, the shoe rental cost. Okay, let's look at example two on the next page. The wider step of a proportional relationship. A robotic assembly line manufactures a set number of parts per minute. Use a graph to verify how many parts the assembly line manufactures when it is first turned on. So look at the manufacturer line. We have 12 parts um, in, in one minute, right? That's not 100. Yeah, that's one minute. So step one, we're going to predict the number of parts. The machine has not made any parts when it's first turned on. So of course, um, we're going to start with zero. It could be our prediction. Right, it could be our prediction, but let's see. Step two: determine the number of parts manufactured at different intervals. So look at the table. In one minute, there are twelve parts. Three minutes, thirty-six. Five minutes, sixty. Eight minutes, ninety-six. And plotting the point, we see, yeah, it starts from zero comma zero. So that that makes sense. Okay. So when we first started, and we start from um, the origin, that means the machine didn't start. And so of course there won't be any parts made. And so it makes sense that we start from zero, okay? So that's when we start from zero comma zero, the origin. Example three, identify the wider step. But that's not always the case. We might start from somewhere else, okay? Look at these different graphs. What is the wider step for each of the linear relationships shown? So this line, the first one, crosses the y-axis at 0, 2. So you have to identify the point where the line crosses your y-axis. That is called the y-intercept, OK? It intercepts the y-axis, OK? So it crosses at 0, 2. So the y-intercept is 2, OK? You can't just say y is 2, um, y is y y is going to be a variable that's going to change all the time. But when x is 0, y is 2. So the y-intercept is 2, OK? Second, second one, the line crosses the y-axis at here, which is 0, comma, negative 1. Your y-intercept always have to have when x is equal to 0, OK? That's the definition of the y-intercept as well, because when you cross the y-axis, that is exactly where y x is equal to zero. And so only your y values are changing, and that is called your y-intercept. So the y-intercept here is negative one. The last one, the line crosses the y-axis at zero comma zero, the origin, so the y-intercept is zero. So let's look at the try question here. What is the y-intercept of each graph? Can you identify the wider set? And can you explain why it is the wider set? Okay, explain it like um, they did in example of three. And that should be fine. So if you can do it by yourself, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So what's the wider set here? It crosses the line, it crosses. The line crosses the y-intercept at this point where it's 0, 2. So your y-intercept is 2. How do, you, how do you explain it? You say exactly like what we just said be, just now, right? The line crosses the y-axis at 0, 2. So the y-intercept Okay, we're about this one. The line crosses the y-axis at zero comma where? That's negative 0 0.5. So, so you say that the y-intercept is negative 0 0.5. Okay. 
All right, that was our lesson. So let's summarize our lesson. The y-intercept is the y-coordinate of the point on the graph where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, remember that definition. When the line crosses through the origin, the y-intercept is zero. When the line crosses above the origin, it's gonna be positive. Obviously, your y value is gonna be greater than zero, so it's positive. And when the line crosses below the origin, it's going to be negative because obviously your y values are all negative below the zero line, right? Yeah. So that was lesson 7-8, understanding the y-intercept of a line. If you have any more questions about this lesson, please ask Ms. King in class. Um, otherwise, we'll continue with our last lesson of the topic in the next video, analyzing linear equations. I'll see you there. Bye, guys.